I am here on Wheeling Island, West Virginia, and today we're going to take a look at the Wheeling Island Bridge, which is also the first bridge in the United States, over a thousand feet long, and was at one time the longest suspension bridge in the entire world. So basically, this was really the first major bridge in the United States, and we're going to check it out. Now before you ask, I know this bridge has a bunch of closed signs on it, but this is only for cars. It's still open and perfectly safe for pedestrians to walk on. There's a two ton weight limit on this bridge as it was built in the 1800s. And basically people kept defying this rule. And in fact, accidents were caused on this bridge. So they just decided to shut it down. However, this bridge is still perfectly safe to walk and ride a bike on. Um, they just don't want people pushing the limit anymore and potentially ruining a historical landmark. So this bridge was designed by Charles Ellett Jr. And an interesting fact about Ellett Jr. is, if you notice the date of his life, he actually did die fighting the Civil War. And he was a pretty important hero, but he was also very important to engineering and like the early infrastructure of the United States. I mean, this bridge was a pretty big experiment of the time. And although there were suspension bridges before him um, and built before him, there was nothing like this in the United States before. Like this was truly groundbreaking on this side of the Atlantic. So construction on this bridge began in the year 1847 after a long drawn out legal battle to see if it was even legal to build a bridge as um, people tried to use the equity clause, especially by steamboat captains, to prevent the bridge being built because they believe it infringed on their right to be able to navigate the waterways. Steamboats were the most uh, advanced form of transportation we had on rivers at this time. And as this was the Ohio River, this was kind of seen as like an actual highway, like we'd see like a highway today, like on the bridge you see behind me. And back then, um, a lot of ships had smokestacks in order to like run their steam engines. And a lot of steamship operators basically tried to hold up this bridge's construction in the Supreme Court because they believed it violated their rights to be able to operate on the rivers. So for that reason, what was originally going to be a 60 foot tall bridge and have a 60 foot clearance above the river, it was later redesigned to have a 90 foot clearance above the river. That's why this bridge just seems so high compared to the trusses, is because it was originally not supposed to be this tall. So before America had major infrastructure like this, a lot of engineers had to go abroad and study in a foreign university to be able to get the education to build something like this. And uh, Charles Ellet actually went to France in order to get the expertise to figure out how to build suspension bridges, which were very all new and um, very advanced for the time. And he wound up winning the contract over uh, John A. Roebling, who was a German engineer who came from Germany. And he began construction on the bridge in the year 1847 after years of red tape, and was completed after just two years in the year 1849. So already in 1854, just a few years after this bridge was even finished, there was already damage due to high winds. And since uh, suspension bridges are very new at the time, there was a lot of concern that the bridge was gonna be unsafe. But fortunately, Charles Ellett was able to come back and reopen the bridge after just three months of construction. Now, I'm sure it's not surprising, as old as this bridge is, is that they've had to make many modernization efforts to you know, make it uh, up to the modern uh, infrastructure standards. And while this bridge originally had like a solid sidewalk and a, and a solid road, it now is an open steel grate to increase wind resistance, as I mean, they try to keep the bridge open as long as possible, and that reduced the strain that was actually put on all these beams and wires. However, it is a little scary, and usually I like to longboard across a bridge, but I'm not gonna lie, it is just a little, a little too scary to ride my skateboard and uh, carry a camera and try to shoot. So unlike pretty much any other bridge in the United States today, this suspension bridge still has wooden rails up here. Like you can see the divots in it and the fact that they repainted it red a bunch of times. It's a little bit disturbing to think that this bridge is being held together by a bunch of metal cables and wooden planks, but I mean, it's still here. Now, one of your questions might be, why was this first major suspension bridge across uh, the Appalachians built in Wheeling, West Virginia of all places. And you gotta understand that Wheeling, West Virginia wasn't always the small town it is today. In fact, in 1840, Wheeling was the second largest city in the state of Virginia. And yes, that's correct, Virginia. When this bridge was first built, this was still part of the state of Virginia as West Virginia seceded from the state of Virginia during the Civil War and would continue to remain loyal to the Union partly because uh, the Union's transport system was a major part of their income at the time. So this bridge was actually originally built by the Virginia State Engineer Corps. So the construction of this bridge in Wheeling was incredibly important for this city. The route from east to west around this area would have gone from Philadelphia to Cincinnati, 
and the city of Wheeling began to be bypassed on the National Road, and there was a ferry going across the river at a different point, so this really needed to be constructed right here. So the thing that makes me a little sad about this bridge is that it is still the oldest American suspension bridge that is still standing and still operational today. However, just the size and scale of bridges has just been, has just absolutely dwarfed this one over the years. Even rival engineer John Roebling's bridge in Brooklyn, New York, or even his in Cincinnati, um, is more famous than this one, as this bridge was just kind of forgotten. Even though it was a huge landmark and had more of an impact probably than any other major bridge in the United States other than maybe the Golden Gate Bridge, it's just kind of a forgotten piece of U.S. history, much like Wheeling's impact on U.S. history was in the early 1800s. Um, and if you ever pass by Wheeling or even you go through West Virginia, just keep in mind that this used to be a pretty booming and important part of the United States and it really shouldn't be forgotten history as it kind of is today. So not only was this bridge a major landmark in American engineering, it was also a major landmark in the connectivity of the United States as a whole. This was the first time that a part of the U.S. highway system was able to cross the Ohio River. And this was really the first real crossing it had, and this was the first time the uh, American highway system really ran all the way across the Appalachians uninterrupted into what became the Midwest and the Western United States. So, I mean, this was a first really big step for our country to complete something like this. It really went on to show that uh, geography wasn't going to stop the United States from growing and continuing to expand. So, I mean, this is, is really a monument as much as it is a bridge to uh, the growth of America and the birth of a new nation that, that was going to be innovative and just continue growing. So, if you ever want to tell your friends a fun fact, you can tell them that the oldest bridge in the United States, over a thousand feet long, is located in Wheeling, West Virginia. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you on the next one.